What's going on guys and welcome to this video on how to use the Instancio Java library to make unit testing in Spring Boot applications easier. In this video, we'll take a look at how Instancio can help you reduce the pain of setting object values in your unit test. Alright, to get started with this tutorial, I went ahead and pre-configure a Spring Boot uh, 3 application. Um, I'm using Gradle as a build 2 and using Spring Boot 3.0 with the following configuration. And for the dependency section, I've included just the bare minimum of Spring Web dependency, Spring Data JDBC for our data layer. And I'm using the H2 in memory database for database uh, in this test application. So basically this is it. This is the application I've used and I've also went ahead and started up in IntelliJ. So I'm going to show you this is what it looks like. I've imported the app in IntelliJ. So um, to speed up things, I went ahead and set up also just the basic domain and some controller and a repository and service just to get things going faster. So basically, I have a song uh, domain here, which is kind of like our entity. But when you use um, Spring Data JDBC, you call them domain because they are not entities. So basically, this is our domain. It has an ID, song ID. We have title, artist, album, duration, and all of the good stuff. And also, we have this uh, integer here, this version, which uh, is something, something used, used by Spring Data to deal with that this is a new um, record or not in the database. So, as you may or may not know, Spring Data does not create your tables for you, so you have to rely on some schema or probably in the reproduction application. You use something like Flyway or Wikibase to manage your database schemas. But since we're having just a simple application to test the power of Instancio, we're gonna work with this schema, the SQL file that I have right here in my class bar. And it has just one table, the song table that represents the song to me. And it contains just the basic uh, columns, then song title, uh, song ID, title, audience, album, etc. Et so this is the schema that we're going to use and inside of the same resource file I also went ahead and pre-configure our application to work with H2. I've set up application name and then instructed to bootstrap the database from this SQL schema. And then I've configured the H2 console and also set up the data source to just the like basic things to get the application up and running. The goal of this tutorial is not to show you how to build correct application and stuff like that. about showing you how to use Instancio to um, set up your, 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 your objects value in, in unit testing or integration testing. So I have a basic service here, some service, all it does, I have just one method and all it does is save a song to a database using the song repository. All right, so this is it for the project setup. Now I'm gonna show you how we can use the Instancio Java library to facilitate our testing. All right, now let's get <coughs> Instancio in our application. Firstly, we have to come over to this website, instancio.org. That's the official website of the library. And we're gonna click on uh, Get Started and try to find the dependency that we need to add to our project so we can have Instancio. So we have uh, two options here, if you can look carefully. We have um, this one that is a Maven dependency that you can copy and paste in your form that's XML file. And there's also a graded version. And then there's also an instance your core version here that you can use if you have um, other version of JUnit, like JUnit 4. And you can use this uh, version. They also have the, the greater equivalent for that as well. But for me, I have JUnit 5 in this uh, project, so I'm going to go with the JUnit, Instancio JUnit version and the Gradle uh, equivalent. So I'm going to copy this test implementation uh, dependency and take it over to my IntelliJ project. 
the command C and then I move over to IntelliJ. I'm going to find my builder greater file and then add the dependency. Just like that. And voila. Now I'm going to reload my dependencies. And just like that, we're going to have instance <coughs> in our application. There's more things I want to show you on this website. So now that we've um, added the library in the project, it's a good thing to look at the documentation of any library whenever you need to know more information about it. So we'll go directly to the user guide. Uh, it's a really organized and well populated and well written uh, documentation here. As you can see, say instance here is a Java library for generating test objects. Its main goal is to reduce uh, manual data setup in unit tests and it was an API designed to be non-intrusive and so on and so on. Look at the project goal here. See, there are several libraries for generating realistic test data, <coughs> such as addresses, first name, last name, and so on. Why instance you also support this use case? This is not its goal. So what's the goal of instance? The idea behind the project is that most unit tests do not actually care what the actual values are. They just require the presence of a value. So Instancio is simply going to help us generate that is fully populated these objects with random data, including arrays, collection, nested objects, etc. etc. So now you can head over to the Instancio website and come to the user guide so that you can read more about this if you need to. But I'm going to go strictly to the um, Instancio API and then let's look at what's inside of it. So this is how you create the objects with instance. You have the shorthand method here where you have to call the instance your class and then call the create a, a method and then pass it the type of the data that you want to populate. And just like that instance will give you a populated uh, instance of that specific type that you're gonna pass here. There's also the, the Builder API pattern that you can use, and which is my preferred method. Um, but I'm going to show you everything um, in a short time. So this is the documentation. Now let's get back to our IntelliJ. I'm sure it's already loaded. Nice. So I'm going to close this one. And let's open our project. This is the source. Okay. And this is our application code. So now I'm going to go straight to our service and try to generate uh, a test. I'm going to press Command Shift and T. And this is going to generate some service test for us. Oh, I already did that before. No problem. So basically, as you can see, I'm using Mokito and <coughs> I'm injecting my song service and then using a mock, create a mock object of the repository, the song repository. <laughs> So let's look at this um, example test that we have here. What is it doing? Basically, it's, it's creating a test object of song and then populating it with these values, random values. And then I set up my mock object here. Whenever I call the song.repository, song repository that save method in the execution flow, it should return me the song that I populated up here. So, and now I'm going to actually execute the song service and then add song path in the song. And I'm expecting it to return me this song because that's what I passed here in my um, mock setup. So, when, okay, basically I'm just doing system.print.ln here to see actually the values that we have. So, I'm going to run this test and then I'm going to see if it's going to pass or not. So I'll run this test. Hey, voila, the test passed successfully. So as you can see, we have here, the song ID is one which is uh, the same as this one that we pre-populated. The song title, song title, song, like every, all of the information is consistent. And if you look across everything, it is just as we set them. So now, the this is where you can ask me like okay how does instance help me in this case 
So let's imagine that the sunglass has tons and tons of other objects embedded and lots of fields that you need to populate manually. So that means that you're gonna have a very long test class with information that you really, really should not be typing manually with things like instances around. <coughs> you're gonna have to manually type all this information like I did here, but using instances, you can do this in a much cleaner and better way. I'm going to show you right now. So to use instance here, first thing you do is declare an object. So song, I'm going to call it song one, like so. And then it will be equal to instance here dot. I like to use the, the builder pattern. So I'm going to go with it off and then instance here of what? Then you pass the type that you want to create values we want to populate. So the song and then class dot create because it's a better pattern thing so you have to call it create. Now if you leave it as like this it's gonna create an object for you populate all these fields just like I did some type to artist album etc instance is gonna create an object of song and gonna populate it with all the value needed to run the test. So as you can see, I've like reduced this thing from how many lines, one, two, three, all the way down here to just basically one line or two line codes. So instance is gonna fill this one for me and make it easy. So I can now pass this song here. And then when I run my, when I, oh, not this one, sorry. When I run my test now, I should have the object that is to populate for me. So we're going to see what that object looks like. And let's see how test passed. And if you look down here, um, where you can see that it gives an ID, generated an ID for us, generated a title, generated an uh, artist name with just some random strings. And it's very careful of the data type as well. When it is an integer, it generates an integer value. When it's a string, it generates a string value, and etc. So even if you have embedded objects, it can also go ahead and generate values for those embedded objects. So now let's look at the more powerful features of Instance. Instead of normally just passing like this, you may want to customize certain fields so that your test can be more um, unique or maybe more. Uh, Say, um, centered on a specific use case. So let's assume that um, we want um, we want our we want our um, uh, I'd call it uh, ID to be of cert of a certain value. We don't want instance to generate um, a random value for us for ID like um, like it did here. So we want to have an ID for our our song object. So now. What you're gonna do normally is you have to um i'm gonna call it, since it's long i'm gonna create an object using the var keyword and i'm gonna call it song id and so you go to maybe you want to uh because it's a long type and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna instruct instance here to use the song id that i have written up here as the ID for this object when it's generating it. So it's going to automatically generate the rest of the other fields, but the ID is going to use the ID that I specified. So how does Instance here do that? Well, it's quite simple. You use the set method. With the set method, you can pass in a target, and our target in this case is a field. We're trying to target a field, and that field is um, from the um, song class. From the song class, we have um, um, a field called ID, song ID to be specific. So we're gonna instruct it to use the song ID and <coughs> and give it a value. Which value is gonna give it? The value that we specify up here, song ID. So um, I have to do some imports here, import type matter. Good. So now with this line just one line added here instance here is not going to generate for us the field song id but instead it's going to use the song id that i instructed to use right here 
Now it's gonna, as usual, generate automatically the rest of the the um the class the the fields in this uh, class, and then it's gonna ignore this one and use what we have here. So let's test it out and see how it works out. I'm gonna save and then execute our test again. <laughs> and voila, I like this test passing thing. And if you look carefully, you will see that our song ID now is 12, as we said. And then we can have the rest of our other few set by um, instance here automatically for us, which is cool because not only in a unit test, if you look at the, the documentation here, they told us we don't really care about these values. We just want something to be there so that we can go ahead and create an object and save it and test. We just maybe care about one or two fields. So these fields that we actually care about, we can customize them. There are lots of methods that you can use to customize uh, fields in IntelliJ uh, with Instancy. So I'm going to show you some of them on their documentation. If you look here, um, you can see that there is um, this one called ignore. You can use the ignore method to ignore certain fields so that you can tell Instancy, okay, don't worry about this one. Just leave it as it is. Don't fill it. Don't create a uh, value for it and there are lots of other um, APIs that are shipped this um, library you can take your time to look at them and uh, you you're gonna get lots of value from this it's gonna help you to um, 10x your unit testing help you to have more leaner unit testing uh, codes so you don't have to worry about setting these objects value that you don't really need manually so instance is gonna solve the problem for you. It also helps us with um, with uh, collections. I'm trying to see which part of documentation. Okay, here for example. This is an example. Let's see if we can um, implement that in our example. So basically what you need to do is to call instance that's off list. You see that's why I like the builder pattern. Use off list and then you pass the class and then you specify how many instances of this specific class you want. And you create it. Instance is automatically going to generate a list of the class that you specify. For example, in this case, it's person, and it's going to give you ten person a list containing ten person. So just like that, you're going to have all the things you need to go and carry on your unit testing in your application, and you don't have to worry about uh, uh, certain values in your know, and doing copy and paste all around the place. So this is a very, very um, unique and very important library. I think you should check it out for yourself and let me know what you think about it. That's it for this short video, guys. I hope you find value in this and happy unit testing.